14 Reebok CrossFit Games officially begin right now with the Masters competition here at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. Sunny Carson, California for the Masters competition of the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. I'm Justin Judkins alongside Miles Lewis. We are getting set to take on the deadlift ladder. It's going to be the men in the 45 to 49 age divisions. And the deadlift ladder is just like it sounds. They're going to start off with a 325 pound bar and advance up incrementally the last bar on the floor 535 pounds yeah what a great rate way to start this uh this year's crossfit games for these guys just a standard deadlift a little bit of a different approach than they might be used to though these gentlemen will be given 20 seconds to perform the lift and they'll have 10 seconds to transition to the next lift now in the event of a lift that they didn't successfully get or they didn't attempt They'll have an option for a tiebreaker bar, which is 275 pounds, which is right behind, which they'll have a chance to lift as many reps that they have uh, time left. He was able to get 12 of the tiebreaker lifts after successfully lifting 495 pounds. Carl Dial able to stand up with 475 pounds. Carl Dial showing a deadlift max, 463 pounds. Carl successful at 495. Interesting thing about Carl Dial, he's got a, a, an entertainment background, studied dance, a street performer. He's, he's got a, a, a martial arts background, so a, a, a real sense of body awareness out of stockholm sweden that's great long way from home he's yeah. gonna represent three crossfit two, solid is where he one. trains 515 pounds no go jumps right to the 275 pound bar now it's down to that tiebreaker looking to beat that 12 reps It looks he like does. he's able to get 14. <laughs> 14. So there's your current leader, Carl Dial. Three, two, with a lift at 495 one. plus 14 of those tiebreaker deadlifts. No doubt the CrossFit solid members over there in Stockholm, Sweden are roaring at their TVs right now. But take your hat off to Carl Dial. Not only did he lift 495 pounds, but he also went back and in the time he was given, was able to lift 275 14 times that's blazing through those reps that's all within 20 seconds yeah coming up next 40 to 44 year olds and here are your top three finishers for event number one the deadlift ladder Looking at the European qualifier coming in from Stockholm, Sweden. Sweeping event number one. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. This is the Masters competition. The men from the 45 to 49 age division in heat number one have taken the field. Getting ready for event number two. This will be a max distance handstand walk. They only have one attempt, one attempt to go as far as they can down that competition field. One attempt in two minutes. So some of these athletes may not come out right away. They might give uh, some other people a chance to see how far they go. But this is it. Who's been practicing handstand walks at home? We're going to see it right now. There's your opening bell. They are off. And away they go. Lane number one, CJ Russo. Now there is a five foot, your screen. five foot mark there. If they don't make it past the five foot marker on their first attempt, they do get a second. They consider that a false start, so they'll get another shot at it. Past that 30 foot mark, looking strong, purple short, yellow shorts. 
Dennis Cheatham coming down. You see him in the salmon colored shirt. The bottom of your screen, yellow shorts. CJ Russo in lane number one. Still going strong. We've got uh, William Walker, Randall Lane in lanes eight and nine, respectively, at the top of your screen on the far left. And uh, Randall Lane is the one with the uh, red short salmon colored shirt. And William Walker just, excuse me, that was Carl Dial in the purple shirt just coming to This is great. We got a chance to talk to William Walker over here behind the booth, and he was excited to see this event. This was his thing. He said that the first event was not really his cup of tea, that uh, deadlift ladder, but he expected to do well on this next one, and he's proven to do so. Yeah. William Walker out of Louisville, Kentucky, trains at CrossFit The Ville. Yeah. 150 feet from William. Great, great job there from William. That's cool. That's great to see. It's a sled drive. Hey, it's a sprint. We've got 135 pounds on the on the sled. How fast can you get down that competition field? 100 yards to that red finish mat. Well, this is the heaviest we've seen so far, so they might change the pace a little bit, but right now this is just an all-out effort as fast as you can get it across the field. There's some different strategies of where they're putting those straps, but, but it's just grunt work. It is just put the head down and move. Coming heat in the 45 to 49 year old male division. William Walker using all of that one. We've got 10 seconds. Jussel's uh, Athlete, straps stand just by. flying away. Looks like he's still up and struggling, but he's got it where he wants it now. There's your starting bell. 135 pounds, 100 yards. How fast can you drag that sled? Mike Egan on the far right at the top of the screen. Lane number 10. That's pulling away from the back. All kind of neck and neck. Looks like Carl Dial. Did exceptional on the next thing while trying to keep those short stuff. Coming out to the side. Steps coming. One lane over. Dennis Cheatham in hot pursuit. And Dennis will make the pass. Can he hang on? Cheatham is passing him. Hard to say, but lane number six, I think Cliff Musgrave. Dennis and Carl. Might have crossed that finish line. Followed First, we're going to see, uh, check those results. Dennis Cheatham and finished about 35 seconds. Matt Bills, uh, unofficial time, 40, 39 seconds, right around the 40-second mark. CJ Russo coming in around the 50-second mark. Yeah, the exciting finish at the end. It was just, an, a, just a, right down to the very end. Who who had the ability to push it to the limits, man? And you see them landed on their faces. Boy, that was exhausting. It, it sure is. <laughs> Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Masters competition here at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. I'm Justin Judkins alongside Miles Lewis. The men from the 45 to 49 age division of the Masters competition are getting ready to take on event number four. Event number four consists of five rounds for time. It's a nasty little couplet, and I love this combination of movements, Miles. They're facing a 400-meter run and two rope climbs. Yeah, great way to end the day. We started off with some heavy lifts, some gymnastic skills, some quick sprints, and then, bam, a long-distance aerobic run. So it's more uh, who's been... Who's been testing out their aerobic capacity? Who's willing to go long? And coming into event number four, your overall leaderboard, Carl Dial, sits at the top, 280 points, outdistancing Ron Ortiz, who is currently in second place. 100 points up for grabs in event number four, so you can follow your favorite athletes out of the, the, the points by yourself, depending on how they finish. Event number four just about to get underway. So we've seen some short duration workouts earlier today. We've seen some strength events. 
And now we're going to enter a different time domain, meaning that it's a longer workout. Yes. 16 minute time cap. This is big, you know. Look, looking at the athletes that have a better, a better aerobic capacity, they can go longer. Out of, right out of the game, this heat. Looking at some of these guys out there, they've got some fantastic 5K times. Some of the fast times out there that we might want to keep our eye on. Cliff Lewis, Jerry Hill going into this event, sitting in 11th place. Carl Dial in lane 17 came into event number four in first place, so he needs to have a strong finish in this workout. He's got several athletes ahead of him. He could watch that lead slip away because of event number four. Jerry Hill only has one more rope climb on this round. Jerry Hill on the right, Mick McQuaid on the left. Jerry Hill now will advance his marker to the finish mat. And it's Jerry Hill that will win event number four. He needed that for his overall standings. And Vic McQuaid now will take second place in event number four. We're 10 minutes and 36 seconds into this workout, so that'll be the unofficial time for Vic. Now the race is for third place between Jeff Teacher and Ron Ortiz. Teacher's got one rope climb in. And Jeff Teacher up the rope it could be a photo oh, finish no not able to no. do it we'll see if oh he is he did get it jeff teacher moves his marker to the final mat 11 minutes and one second unofficial time for jeff he'll take third place and edge out ron ortiz who now finishes with 11 minutes and seven seconds as an unofficial time so bang your top four athletes are in and it was tight if this is anything like the rest of the week, this is going to be exciting to watch this heat. He didn't get rattled. He came on strong in those final two rounds and just poured it on. Back to Carl Dial from Stockholm, Sweden. Now up the road. This is his uh, last round. He came into this event in first place. Carl Dial in lane number 17, employing, uh, getting up that rope for the second time. Now Carl is trying to beat out Matt Beals in lane number eight. Not sure if he was able to do it, but Carl Dial, your overall leader coming into event number four, has finished event number four. Just a little over 12 minutes into the workout. Welcome, everybody, as our coverage of the Masters competition continues. The 40 to 49-year-old men are taking the field, getting ready to start in on event number five. It's titled 2007. I'm Justin Judkins alongside Miles Lewis and Miles. These guys are going to be starting in on a 1,000-meter row, then and they're off on five rounds of 25 pull-ups and seven shoulder to overhead with 135 pounds on the bar. Well, one person that impressed me yesterday was Carl Dial. He is currently in first place coming into day, two, day two's competition. He placed first on that dead left ladder yesterday, event number one. Really, some people are surprising us. It's, it, it's possible to, to kind of account for what, what these guys have done the previous night. Have they, they rested well? Have they given their body enough attention to kind of rebuild, you know, enough recovery time, enough mobility, enough stretching, stuff like that. So we'll see who could bring it. This is the first workout of day two. You see Carl Dial in the salmon colored shirt, black shorts. He's coming into today's competition in first place overall. He has a martial arts background and he owns CrossFit Solid in Stockholm, Sweden. Cro Carl Dial's been to the games before in 2012. He placed seventh. So uh, he's been here before. He understands what it takes. He also won the deadlift ladder. So a 495-pound deadlift on day one. So real strong guy. Not weighing it real heavy. 181 pounds. He's 5'10", 47 years old. So good, solid, solid, rounded athlete. Less than 100 meters left on their row. So these are the athletes that are going to be the first ones off that rower. And there you go. We've already got athletes leaving the rower. Lane number three, Brandon Bonzer, is the first one off the rower. 
joined closely by lane 11, Ron Ortiz, and lane number seven, Matt Bills. So several athletes now on to their first round of 25 pull-ups. Awesome, ex inspiring, inspirational to watch these guys work. But also just kind of comparing yourself to them and realizing, man, it, it's hopeful. You can just put a little hard work and some energy and really focus on yourself and dedicate yourself. And this, is, this could potentially be you. Carl Dial came into this competition, into this event in first place. So this could hurt him in the overall standings right now. He's got several athletes that have finished this workout ahead of him. This will move him down in those overall standings. Now he'll step on that finish mat, unofficial time, 15 minutes flat. So he does come in one minute under that 16 minute time cap finish podium. This is Ron Ortiz. He won the games last year and he did not finish this workout. That's gotta hurt him. He was second place coming into today's competition. He won event number three, the sled drag yesterday. But he's going to need a lot more first place finishes if he wants to get back on that podium, on top of the podium like he was last year. But take your hat off to Jerry Hill. 10 minutes and 49 seconds. That will conclude event number five for the 45 to 49 year old Masters competitors. Scheme of 21, 15, 9, 80 pound med ball. So the weights increase, the, the, the med ball is getting heavier each, each uh, age division. So 80 pound med ball clean and then burpees. We all know and love those burpees, right? <laughs> the previous heats we've seen this, this awful exhaustion come over these guys at the end. Here are your overall standings coming into this event. Carl Dial still hangs on to first place with a one point advantage over second place Vic McQuaid. But look at Jerry Hill. He started the day in sixth place and moved into third after winning event number five. 30 seconds. There's Vic McQuaid and Carl Dial. Only one point separates the two gentlemen. Dial on the right, McQuaid on the left. And they're off. Keep your eye on lanes 9 and 10 with Vic McQuaid and Carl Dial battling it out. Only one point separates the two. And there's a lot on the line for this workout. Yeah, this is the, the final event and the day two. So a lot of pressure here. Knowing that these athletes are going to push it a little bit, there's no time to rest on this workout. Nowhere to hide. Just move fast and, and furious through this workout. Jerry Hill coming on into this event after winning the previous two events. He's on a roll, he's got the momentum, he's confident, and this fits well into his wheelhouse as well. Thank you for an exciting finish. Randall Lane now finishing. We told you that this would smash these guys. Carl Dial who came into this event in the lead with one point advantage over Big McQuaid. Jerry Hill now with, this, with another win under his belt. We are picking up the action here on ESPN with the 45 to 49 year old Masters competitors. We're at the StubHub Center in Carson, California for the third and final day of competition here at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. 50 box jumps to start it off, 25 toes to bar, 50 wall balls, 25 ring dips, and then back again through the wall balls, toes to bar, and box jumps all of which should be done within that 21 minute time cap. There's only 18 points at this point that separate first place Jerry Hill from third place Jeff Teacher. And Jerry has done that on the strength of winning the last three events. So he started out kind of slow, but man, he turned it on. So the pressure's on, really. It's anybody's game here, anybody's chance to take this, uh, this podium. So. Big, a lot of weight on this uh, this event here. All right, we're underway, Masters man. Here we go. You know, we talked about Jerry's commanding performance up to this point, and I'll tell you this: this is also a workout that fits really well into his wheelhouse. You're watching for the first athlete to break away from those box jump overs. As the uh, age divisions have gotten younger, the work required has increased. All right, lane number four, William Walker. Now we've got athletes moving on to those toes to bar. Lane number four, William Walker, all moving on to those toes to bar. So they must do 25 toes to bar. Lane two, And trying to get on top of that podium, he's gotta go through Carl Dial 
and also Jerry Hill in order to stand at the top of that podium. Three minutes into this workout. 25 toes to bar. You see Jerry just put his sunglasses on. One more factor in the play here is this sun. The sun is blaring down or glaring down right on these guys. So it's not something they're used to at their home gym is working out uh, with, that, with that sun right in their eyes. So another factor, but you know what? It's the CrossFit Games. Uh, they'll, they'll bring it. No distractions. <laughs> That's a 20-pound wall ball. They're shooting it at a 10-foot target. Uh, accuracy is a component here, but also the judges are looking for the, the hip crease down below the knees, so the squat has to be at full depth. Carl Dial with the turquoise shirt. He's at 24 reps. Jerry Hill with the yellow shorts on. He is at 33 reps. Tincher now, four reps left. The red shorts. Lane number nine. Final rep on that wall ball, then he will move on to the rings. He must complete 25 ring dips. So each athlete prior to this competition, uh, the day before, they were measured to to, uh, to the height of that band behind them. So the athlete has to get their shoulders below the level of their elbow and then have the uh, the back or the neck touch the, touch the strap there. So that's what the judges are looking for right there. The lead has been changing back and forth between Jeff Teacher in lane number nine and Victor McQuaid in lane number 12. This is now where, where the workout really begins. This is where where your training and your or your heart and your effort really starts to uh, starts to pan out here. Jerry Hill on the right, coming in as the overall leader after winning the last three events. Vic McQuaid on the right with the turquoise shirt. Jeff Tincher, lane number nine with the red shorts and no shirt. And it's really been Jeff Tincher and Vic McQuaid trading that lead in this workout back and forth. Randall Lane on the far left. Next to him, Brian Shockley. Now back to Jeff Tincher in the red shorts. Moving on to the 25 Toast Bar. Jeff Tincher, lane number nine. Trying to get out of commanding lead. So far, I think he's the only athlete on the toast bar. Now he's just joined by Jerry Hill. So Jerry Hill making up some ground, trying to gain on Jeff Tinsher. Now there's, there's and Jerry Hill. Close. He's yeah, pouring Jerry it on now. Past him. Hill down to his final five reps. Tinsher with a four rep advantage over Jerry Hill. Now a five rep advantage. He will start in on the box jumps first. Must complete 50 box jumps. It's William Walker, Jeff Tincher, Jerry Hill, all going neck and neck, rep for rep. It's just gonna be who jumps onto that red finish platform first, and it's William Walker. He does it, 14.50 unofficial time. Jerry in second place in event number seven. Just to give you viewers at home and a little idea, currently the temperature is 87 degrees, but on the field, in the black, we're well into the 90s, if not 100 degree temperatures out there, so. Those guys are working hard out there. Oftentimes in these workouts, just putting it to the limit. And, and yesterday, Carl Dell actually needed a little help off the field from some of the medics just uh, just because he, he laid it out there, thoroughly exhausted. I'll tell you, this is hurting Carl Dial right now because he came into this event in second place. There wasn't a lot of point separation between him and Jeff Tincher. We can see it. And Jeff, of course, this is yesterday finished in third passing place. Passing out right after the event and, and really needing some medical attention there. But but this is the effort he's putting into the events. You know, this is the kind of guy he is. And uh, he's given his heart. Here he is working hard this morning. From Stockholm, Sweden. No doubt. Imagine that making he's his, battling with the yeah, heat like this. Making his country right? proud making his fans proud, making his family and friends proud, but man, it is really awesome to see that kind of effort out of these athletes. And Carl Dial on his last set of 10. Interesting technique. He's got a little duck waddle across the top there, but you know, he's saving energy by not having to stand all the way up. So that's helpful, just conserving energy. Carl down to his final rep, steps on the finish mat. Unofficial time for Carl Dial. 
18 minutes and 53 seconds. That'll put him in 14th place in event number seven. So remember, he came into this event in second place. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna hurt. That's not the kind of uh, finish he would have liked to maintain that position on the leaderboard, but you know, we do have one more event today where he could potentially make up some ground here. 90 seconds remaining, gentlemen, 90 seconds. I think, I think Carl Dial, in an effort to get out from underneath the away from the sun, yeah, he's getting to where there's a little bit of shade. You see his toe and his hand sticking out as judges say, you all well, right, that, man? that's the only shade that, that the yeah. athletes have out there, so not a bad spot to be, a little cooler. <laughs> 20 minutes into this workout, there's 60 seconds remaining. Hey, man, I hate to bug you, but I need a signature. You can't be down there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a little better finish than yesterday. A little better, better, little better condition than he was after after the workout yesterday. Welcome as our con, as our coverage continues of the 45 to 49 year old age division of the Masters competition. The stands are filling up in anticipation of a great event. They're going to see that. I'm Justin Judges alongside Miles Lewis. The athletes are now taking the field and about to start in on their eighth and final event here at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. This is what they are going to be taking on. Just announced to them last night, so no preparation time. Here we go. 100-meter sprint, five burpee muscle-ups, five snatches with a whopping weight at 165 pounds. And they're off. Don't blink because you'll miss it. A 100 meter sprint. And then it's on to five burpee muscle ups and five snatches at 165 pounds. With such small reps, such quick workout, absolute critical that none of these guys will receive a no rep. So the judges are looking for that simple burpee standards, chest touch to the ground, but muscle up any way they can get to the top to a full locked out position. Scott DeTore wins the foot race. He's the first one to get on those rings for those burpee muscle ups. But we're going to find out if... The action can continue with uh, Jerry Hill after winning three events. We'll see if he can continue that pace and win a fourth here at the CrossFit Games. Scott DeTore down to his final three reps, but he gets a no rep. And we talked about how costly those are in a quick workout like this, Miles. Yeah, that can't happen at this point, and that could have cost him. Carl Dial, Jerry Hill, both finishing up their burpee muscle ups virtually at the same time. It's going to come down to whoever can do those snatches faster. Jerry Hill's got two in. Carl Dial now has two. Jerry Hill with a slight advantage over Carl Dial. Going touch and go on snatches at 165 pounds. Now both athletes have one rep left. Jerry will win his fourth event out of eight. He comes into this competition, wins half of the events, and will be crowned the world's fittest 45 to 49 year old. And he was in first leading into this event, and he stayed on top with that finish. What a great way to, to make it on your last event here. Carl Dial takes second, just seconds behind, about 12 seconds behind Jerry Hill. Ron Ortiz takes third, and Jeff Tincher takes fourth in event number eight. This is the last event of their three-day competition. <laughs> Man, that's fun to see a race like that. These guys coming in, putting pedal to the metal, getting after it. Carl Dial doing everything he can to try to earn a spot on that podium. We're just going to have to wait and see what the final results are to see whether he did it. He was in fourth place coming into event eight. Real we'll find out yeah, real if he close. did enough to get there or not. 
close on that that final standings. We'll have to see how this pans out. Yeah, Carl Dial was in fourth place. He was three points away from Vic McQuaid, who was in third place. So Jeff Tincher, with his fourth place finish in this event, I'm sure will probably remain in second place. But we know one thing for sure, and that is Jerry Hill solidified his spot at the top of the podium by winning the eighth and final event here at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. We have five or six athletes still working on those snatches, 165 pounds. Yeah, you know, you've seen a lot of the athletes wait around and prepare and kind of walk around that bar, but they really don't want to put in the effort and get a no rep. So they know they have a time cap to meet of six minutes, but just got to wait around a little bit, make sure they have that energy to get that rep good. Cliff Musgrave finishing up, stepping on the finish mat. He'll take 12th in this event with a time of four minutes and 12 seconds. See a lot of these guys just pouring everything they have into this, falling on the ground, wiping out, but it, you know, it's the last event of three days of just, just exhaustion. So guys are working hard out there. A little less than 90 seconds left. They've got the time, but man, they can't afford those missed reps. Final rep. Still working on those snatches at 165 pounds, not quite able to do it. He's running out of time. There's your six minute time cap. The eighth and final event belongs to Jerry Hill. Carl Dial, 12 seconds behind him, and then a person that needed this badly, Ron Ortiz in third place.